To finish out this week, we're going to look at polynomial and then rational inequalities. So our steps are really going to be the same in this video and in the next video. Um, there'll be some differences in how we approach something like finding boundary points. But really what we're trying to do is find the boundary points, divide our domain into intervals using those boundary points, and then check where our inequality is true. So that's a very, very important part, and I'm going to take you through all of the parts in the next examples. So let's take a look at this first one together. Again, with a polynomial inequality, so this will change with rationals, we're really, the first step when we're looking for boundary points is really just find the solutions in a polynomial. So what I want to do is I want to do x times x minus 2 is less than or equal to 15, and I want to solve it like I normally would. So here that would be, let's FOIL this, or sorry, distribute the x, and let's also get everything to one side because this is a quadratic and we need it equal to 0, or in equal to 0 in this case. So this would be minus 15 is less than or equal to 0. Then I would solve. So that's quadratic formula or factoring. I'm going to factor because this turns into numbers that multiply to 15 with a difference of negative 2, which is negative 5 and positive 3. Again, this is an inequality the whole time. Now, my boundary points would be if I set these equal to 0. So I'm keeping it in equality, but when I get down to here, I'm setting them equal to 0 to get 5 and to get negative 3. What this tells me is that these are boundary points. So I'm going to take my entire domain from negative infinity to positive infinity, and something special is going to happen at negative 3, and something special is going to happen at 5. So from here to here is the interval of negative infinity to negative 3. And from here to here is the interval from negative 3 to positive 5. And from here to here is the interval from 5 to infinity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a table. And I'm going to ask you a question like this on your assessment. So it's not a bad idea to learn how to make a table. As long as you're organized, you're okay, but this really helps you organize. To get organized, I'm going to, I have three intervals, and so I need four columns. So you always need one more, um, so there's four columns. And I'm going to put my intervals, negative infinity to negative 3, negative 3 to 5, 5 to infinity. I'm going to put those across the top. On the left side, I need however many factors I end up with plus two rows. So I already have a row here, so that's one. I need a row for x minus 5. I need a row for x minus 3. So that's a total of three rows so far. And then I just need my one last row, which is where I'm going to put my sign. So this is how I set up my table. You don't have to put anything up here. You can just leave it blank. Now here's how this is going to work. I need for this to be less than or equal to 0, which means I need my sign to be negative, correct? That's less than or equal to 0. So here's how it's going to work. I'm going to take some kind of point, and you don't have to write it down in your table, but you have to think about it you need some value that is between negative 3 and negative infinity. Like, say, negative 5 could be a test point, because that's a value that is between negative infinity and negative 3. I also need a point between negative 3 and positive 5. I'm going to choose the value of 0. And then I need a point between 5 and positive infinity. I'm going to choose 7. The only restriction here is I wouldn't want to choose the number 5 because that's a boundary point. So I want to choose something in between the two values. And you can choose different test points than I do and you'll still get the same answer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if I had this test point and I plugged it in here, what sign would I get? Well, negative 5 minus 5 would be negative 10. 
that's a negative. I don't have to write negative 10, I'm just going to write negative. If I plugged in negative 5 into x minus 3, negative 5 minus 3 would be a negative as well. Let's do that as well for 0. So now I'm taking 0. 0 into x minus 5. Oh, shoot, I wrote something wrong. Hold on. Oh, goodness, this is x plus 3. Don't kill me. Let's go back and look at negative 5 again. Negative 5 plus 3, still a negative, so we're okay. Okay, crisis averted. Uh, let's take 0. 0 is 0 minus 5. That would be a negative value. 0 into x plus 3 would be positive 3, so that's a positive. And again, keep in mind, let's say I chose the number 1 instead. 1 minus 5 is still a negative. 1 plus 3 is still a positive. So as long as it's in the interval, you're okay. Now let's look at um, 7. If I take 7 and plug it in to x minus 5, 7 minus 5 is a positive. And if I plug it in here, I get a positive. Now what's the point of all of that? Well, I know I'm going to be multiplying this value times this value. What's a negative times a negative? It's a positive. Okay, what's a negative times a positive? It's a negative. And what is a positive times a positive? It's a positive. What am I looking for? I'm looking for values where this is less than or equal to zero. So where is that? Well, that is where I have a negative because that's less than or equal to zero. So hopefully you've stayed with me so far. We have one more thing that we have to check. When we get to the end of the question, we have to look at is 3, negative 3 included, is positive 5 included? And the way that we determine that is we look at the inequality. It's an or equal to. So this one would be that negative 3 is okay and positive 5 is okay. So my solution would be the interval including negative 3 up to 5 including 5. So this was my answer but then I have to double check if I should be using open or closed brackets. So we're going to do another question together and then one on your own because I know this is difficult but we're going to try another one together. So let's take a look at another example if I'm trying to factor this. I'm going to look at my 4x squared minus 20x plus 25 is greater than 0, so I already have the 0 by itself. On the left side, I want to factor, and what I see is that I have three terms where this guy is a perfect square with the square root of 2x, and this guy is a perfect square with the square root of 5, and so if I'm using my little cheat sheet, then of course I can say this is a perfect square trinomial where I have 2x minus 5 quantity squared. Now, let's say I don't have my little cheat sheet in front of me. Can I use my good old other factoring methods? Of course, I can take a times c and say 4 times 25 is 100, and that would give me two numbers that add to negative 20 would be negative 10 and negative 10, which would multiply to 100 and add to negative 20. Use either factoring by grouping or the amazing factoring method either way and still end up right here. But since I know my factoring and I know that that's a shortcut, we're going to go with that one. From here, remember I want to find the boundary points. And the boundary points occur whenever our function is undefined, which we don't have to worry about on a polynomial, or when it's equal to 0. So I'm just going to set 2x minus 5 equal to 0, which means 2x is equal to 5, which means x is equal to 5 halves. If you want to write that 2.5, you certainly can. Now I'm going to make my table. And remember, my table is going to have my intervals. And the intervals will be from negative infinity to my boundary point and from my boundary point to infinity. So I'm basically taking 
the entire domain of negative infinity to positive infinity and splitting it up. Then I'm going to figure out a test point in each of those intervals. I'm going to check it against each of my 2x minus 5. So even though I know I'm going to get the same answer, I'm going to write it twice. And then I'm interested in whatever sign I get. So get my little table set up, ready to go. And now I'm going to go ahead and use that table. So let's take the number 0, which is in my first interval, and the number say 3, which is greater than 5 halves, but less than infinity. If I plugged 0 into 2x minus 5, I would get 2 times 0 minus 5, which is negative. This is also negative, which gives me a positive sign. 5 halves, sorry, 3, um, 2x, 2 times 3 minus 5 is 6 minus 5, which is positive, which would make this also positive. Positive times a positive is a positive. Remember that I'm looking for values that are greater than 0. On this one, so this is positive values, it also, because it's not or equal to, means I'm going to have open brackets. So if I had a closed bracket, I would just say negative infinity to positive infinity. We could use anything that we wanted. But my solution is going to be negative infinity to 5 halves union 5 halves to infinity. This last one is for you to try on your own. Notice I've already factored it for you, which is fantastic. So press pause, try this question, then press play to see how you did. Step one, boundary points. I need to set x minus 4 equal to 0 and x minus 2 equal to 0 to get positive 4 and positive 2. I'm then going to take my entire domain from negative infinity to positive infinity and divide it into sections based on those. So I'm going to have from negative infinity to positive 2. From positive 2 to positive 4, because I always go least to greatest, and then from positive 4 to positive infinity. Remember, I need one more column than I have domain regions. And then I've got two, well, I've got three factors, x minus 4, x minus 4, and x minus 2. If you only write x minus 4 once, you might mess up your signs. And then we've got sine down here. Again, choose some point, and you don't have to tell me what the point is, but I'm choosing some point like 0 that's between negative infinity and 2, like 3 that's between 2 and 4, and like 5 that's between five, 4 and infinity. Don't ever choose the boundary points. Now let's plug in values. 0 minus 4 would be a negative. 0 minus 4 would be a negative. 0 minus 2 would be a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive times another negative gives me negative. Now let's try 3. 3 minus 4, negative. 3 minus 4, negative. 3 minus 2, positive. If I take a negative times a negative times a positive, I get a positive. Lastly, uh, 5 minus 4, that's positive x minus 4, or 5 minus 4, that's positive, 5 minus 2, that's positive, and I end up with positive. So positives for, and again, what am I looking for? I'm looking for less than or equal to 0. Oops, I used the wrong kind of thing there. Less than or equal to, wow, my goodness, I'm so sorry. Let me try this again. Hey, there's my highlighter. Less than or equal to zero, which means negative, which means this guy is my only region that works. Before I write my solution, oh, let's go back to pen. Before I write my solution, I need to talk about whether or not two is included because I know my answer is negative infinity to two, but should two be an open bracket or closed? 
because it's an or equal to, it can include two. So my solution is negative infinity to two. Two is a closed bracket. So I always write it with an open bracket up here only because I don't want to include two as one of the points I can use as a test point.